you know the bait that you catch out of your river when it comes to shad or any other type of bait is going to be the very best when it comes to catfishing. And it don't make any difference, folks, whether it's channel cat, blue cat, or flatheads, or polywogs, or any of them. Whatever bait that you have available, it's going to be the best. Yep, so the first thing we need is bait. And the type of bait that I'm looking for is going to be gizzard shad. This time of year, I prefer gizzard shad when it comes to fishing this way. And this is a 3 8 mash cast net. This is a monofilament cast net, uh, six foot long. It's called a red horn cast net, very inexpensive. I believe you can get them for anywhere between $40 to $50 a piece. They don't cost much. But the deal is, hey, we have to locate some bait before we can go fishing. So let's do that first. Let's do that first. And the high today is going to get around 80, so I'll be able to shed some of these clothes. But right now, it's nippy for a southern boy. But well, let's go catch us some fish or some bait. We got to have bait. Whoa! Bait fish move from day, day to day. They move a lot of times, but they should be in here somewhere. We're going we're gonna to look for them on the depth finder right here and visually. It's pretty early in the morning right now. Sometimes they'll flip, which what that's just a term that I use or a lot of people use is they'll come up to the top of the water and you can hear a like a that's more what it sounds like. You can visually see it and if you got your back away from them you can hear it. They'll come up and they'll pop the top of the water, then they'll go back down. Okay, there's one. Maybe, maybe we got on top of them. Yeah, I'd see, oh my goodness. I got a net full of them right there. Y'all see all them shed? I mean, I hit the mama load right there. Yeah. Hey man, oh man, oh man. We're just going to pick a few of these out and release the rest. Golly. That's a lot of them. A lot of them right there. Let's let him go. But yeah, we're going to pick out some of these old biggins. Because I do want to fillet them. Alright folks, that's plenty of bait. And then some, we're going to turn these loose. What I'm going to do right now before we start fishing, I'm going to show you the two ways um, that I cut these shad up for channel cats. And this is just what works for me. So let's just do that right now. All right, folks, here's a gizzard shad right here. We're just going to go ahead, cut him like that. And fillet him. All right, there's one fillet. Let's just go ahead and do, do this side too. Just as close to the backbone as you can, just like if you were going to fillet him out to eat, <laughs> which I wouldn't suggest doing that, not on these things. That part right there, when I do it like that, I just throw that away. Now what I do right here, this is a perfect size gizzard shad for this. It's meaty. See how thick that is? The fillet is. That's why I like them that big, but the smaller ones will work too. But what you can do... On these bigger gizzard shad or one way is to cut them in strips just like that okay 
we'll just cut another strip right here. Okay, just like that. And what I'll do is just cut, that'll be a pretty good bait right there. I'll just cut that like that and call that a bait. Now this strip is a little bit long, so I, I'll just cut it in half. So really, what I have right here is five baits from one filet. That's pretty good. That's pretty doggone good, is it not? You can go ahead and do this if you want to. Okay. Now all I have is filet. I'll cut that fin off. Like that. And then again, go right through the middle. Like that. Need a pretty sharp knife to do that. And then haver it up like that. That is a great channel cap bait right there. It uh, This one uh, ends up being about two and a quarter inches long and probably five eighths of an inch, three quarters wide. So that's a lot of bait right there. I mean, <laughs> and here's the other way. Okay, here's a, a smaller one. Not much, but a little bit. We'll just go ahead and get rid of the head, even though the head is a great piece of bait. It's a little bit big to really catch channel cats. So what I'm going to do is cross-section cut it, or you can call this just chunking the bait up. Okay. And I'm going about three-eighths to a half of an inch wide width on a shad of this size. See, and you can get about the same amount of baits off of this as you could, as you can by filleting. Or close to it, one, two, three, four, five, six, probably not as many. But that's a good way, for the bigger channel cat, that's a good way to go about it. If there's some big ones in there, that'll work too. All right, folks. They ain't but one thing to do right now. We got our bait, we got our reels, rods. We know the location or about where this fish is gonna be. Okay, which we're gonna talk about when we get out there. But really we need to pursue this. We need to get on out on the hole and go fishing. We need to go fishing. Whoa, hey man, whoa. 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 All right, folks, we're here. Now, let's talk about tackle right here. This is a cadence reel. It's uh, it's just an ultralight reel. It's not even, it's the CS-10. Little bitty reel. On it, I have 10-pound test braid. Um, and as far as rod, I'm going to use a 5 foot 10 medium light power Z-Man Drew's ultimate, ultimate Ned Rig rod. I'm getting tickled because this thing right here is as light as a fe feather. It's made for finesse fishing, little bitty artificial baits. And I have another one, the one that's against the side of the boat right there, rigged the same way except for it has eight pound test braid and uh but it's a five foot two rod so but what i have right here is a quarter ounce egg weight i've crimped the split shot directly to braid but lightly and i'm using an eagle claw laser sharp circle c um circle hook two all which uh, and i've mentioned this before i prefer a uh, palomar knot when tying directly to braid a palomar knot won't slip very very strong knot okay let's get into it now here's a strip that i cut of that shad gizzard shad and i'm just gonna barely 
hook it right like that just like that now what we're going to do is turn into the wind right here and now right i am right in the middle of a creek channel let me show you what i'm talking about okay see it's 40 feet deep right here right in the middle of a creek channel now that away we're going to come out of the creek channel up onto a flat the flat's going to range anywhere from 14 to 18 feet of water now this time of the year during the fall the summer and fall transition what happens is as the water temperature goes a lot of these shad and and most of them are thread fin shad the bigger variety is and and some of the smaller ones too about the size of this strip will come off the side of these creek channels up onto a flat that's what they do and sometimes they'll venture up on the flat oh my goodness a hundred yards from the creek channel now the re and, and these catfish will follow, especially channel cat. Blues will too. Don't misunderstand me. We could catch a blue, and, you know, I hope I don't hook a real big one, but it's possible. <laughs> it's possible out here. Flathead uh, come up on the edge of these creek channels too, up on these flats, uh, especially if there's cover. But, yeah, right here, now you can see that were 19 feet of water. Now you see this right here, that could possibly be catfish right on the edge of that brake line. And now we're coming up into 18, 19 feet of water. All right, now this is where I'm looking for shad, right on the edge of this creek channel and up onto the flat a little bit. I'm looking for shad and when, once I find them, which I will right here in a little bit, Let's just go ahead and chunk, chunk that out. I'm going to let it hit the bottom. As I go that way, the water is going to get shallower. Then I'm going to be looking for shad. And then what we're going to do is drag that bait along the bottom through those shad. And then hope there's a catfish there. That's exactly what we're going to do. Okay. So let's get everything like we need it in case a big one hits I'm gonna set my drag pretty not real light but pretty light now we're up on 16 feet of water now what I'm gonna do and I have probably a little bit too much line out but we're gonna deal with it I'm just gonna start trolling or dragging this little offering on top of this flat that's close to the creek channel you talking about an excellent way to catch all species of catfish especially this time of year now this bottom is rough it's a shell bottom um matter of fact there's a lot of muscle beds out in here and you can tell a muscle bed when you um, drift or, or drag a bait over a muscle bed it's real 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 rough you can feel the muscles especially when you're using braid I'm not dragging it real quick at all I'm just taking my time real slow see my raw tip see how it's hitting those gravel that that shell bottom it's a rough bottom it's not a muddy bottom this ain't the time of the year to worry about muddy bottoms the water's not not uh, cold enough yet for that matter of fact the surface temperatures 72 degrees that's still pretty warm one's pecking on it right now there he is there we go hooked up again there's a lot of fish in here 
this is a little better fish right here. Golly. Folks, this is a lot of fun right here. A lot of fun. This is a channel. But a good one. Here he comes. He's coming up to the top. Now you talking about fighting. Little tackle like this is the deal. Now as y'all seen now, you can land the big fish. I didn't land him, but I have many, many times. On this little stuff, you can have a ball out here. But this is fun right here. Look here. This is a good channel. Channel cat. I don't like to be overpowered when I'm fishing. And I'm certainly, I'm just about just right right here. <laughs> I mean, this, this is about all I really want is a big channel cat. On tackle like this, it's just about right. There's a lot of fish out here. I knew they would be. There he is. That's a big channel cat. There ain't a nothing wrong with that one. For this part of the country, that's a big one. Okay. Come here, boy. Ah, would you quit? There you go. Yeah. Ain't that something? That's what we're talking about right there, folks. Big old pretty channel cat like that right there. Now, <clears throat> it won't surprise me if I hook a big blue or even another flathead. Won't surprise me at all, but this is my target species, fishing this way. This is a great match for what we're doing. Quit. There's a lot of things that you can do in life that ain't worth a dang. But when it comes to fishing, that right there is a sport second to none. There's no need to get into any mischief when you can be out here fishing. Here in God's country. Let's let him go. Let's let him go. Well, did y'all see him? He took off like a boy. But yeah, y'all do me a favor. If you're into any kind of little old something that you don't feel right about, well, just go fishing and find you a good church. And I'm going to tell you something. you talking about peace. Peace beyond anything that you've ever felt before. And that's what life is about, living in peace much as you possibly can let's catch another one did you know that fishing is a sport second to none yeah <laughs> wow there he is <laughs> golly man oh man back here this is a good one folks Let me loosen off on that drag a little bit. This is a doggone good fish right here. My, my, my. You talking? He's got me going everywhere around this boat. That's fine. That's fine. It was a blessing that I found this boat right here. For as cheap as it was, it's a grizzly tracker real wide comfortable boat to fish out of and I can run around if I need to run around here yonder whatever I can do that fishing with light line you have to when you have to move and get somewhere you need to get there quick but this one right here is giving me a fit it's all I want on this kind of tackle now braid when you tie it direct to braid, folks, we, I think I've mentioned this before, if you're just now starting to fish, realize if you're, you tie a palomar to braid, you got a very, very strong connection. And when you're catfishing, 
you can get by with that in certain situations. But this fish is not wanting to come up. Well, I'm gaining some ground now. We should be able to see what it is. Just a big old, look here what a big channel cat. They ain't no way in the world. I'm going to have to definitely show this one to y'all because this is, this is a big one. This is a doggone big one. And a channel cat can fight. I mean, they have the power. Come on in here, boy. That's a big one. Wow. Well, folks, I want y'all to look what a, a big, healthy channel cat. That's about as healthy of a fish you want to find. And that's a heavy fish, too, for a channel cat. I didn't think, I had to work to attire this fish. Let's see. I had to really work to tire this fish out. There's a lot of fish right here. I know that they would be. Let's get her pliers and get him loose. That is a big, huge channel cat. Taken. Roll that hook out. I'm gonna retire the knot. That was a heck of a battle. Big old pretty, pretty channel cat. And there he goes. I tuckered him out. That was a long battle. You know, a lot of times when you hook this bait up, these strips, you want them to twist as you're dragging them. But if you don't want them to twist, okay, just cut them, make a cut here and one here where it almost comes out to a point and then hook that like this like this right here barely hook it but in the middle oh let me get a little more skin but right in the middle like that now let me get that old slime off that'll keep it from twisting let me show you let me show you that in the water okay see it right there it's coming through there straight now if it was more square on the ends it would it would twist all right let's get this bait back out now we're in 20 feet of water now we slid back or 21 feet we slid back but look at the fish right there the shad they're really tight real tight to the bottom let's get another look at that can y'all see that my screen's dirty okay so we'll just pitch it out there and we'll let it hit the bottom okay it's in the bottom it's on the bottom. Probably, that's probably about 24, 25 feet. We slid back a little bit, so I'm, I'm just going to let some line out to where it gets about 15 yards behind the boat and then engage. Then I'm going to set that drag pretty tight. Okay, about like that. Now we're coming into 16 feet of water. Y'all see the fish right there, 15 feet? See those fish? We're on all kinds of fish right here. Golly. Oh, my, folks. My, 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 my. I got another good one right here. But I got it on the least rod that I... This is the same kind of rod except for it's five foot two. And quite a bit more limber. And a little bitty Fluger President reel. A little old bitty brim and crappie rod reel. <laughs> oh, that fish is coming up now. That fish hitting about 20, 29 feet of water. Oh, it's a blue. He's wrapped up. That's what is the only reason why I got him up that quick. 
Now he's fixing the fight when he gets unraveled. Look how he wrapped himself up. Now he's fixing to go to town. See what I'm talking about? Golly, he woke up then. What happens is that they'll hit it so hard when they're in that deep of water that they'll twist up in your line and you just, they can't do anything. They just sort of float up and you reel them up. And when they come unraveled like that, oh my goodness, it's on. It's on like a chicken bone. But here he comes. I'm wearing him out. He's getting wore out. Takes a while. But is that not the sport of fishing? Let's give them a sporting chance. Let me see if we can't get up there with him. Ah, he's going back down. Yeah. When you're this bad underpowered, you just have to wear them down. The only way that I like to use real strong tackle, like 40 pound test line, big reels, 10, you know, 9, 10, 11, 12 volt circle hooks is when I'm in current. When I'm on the actual river, but in a lake situation like this, you can wear a big fish down on little tackle. But when you're in an anchor position, that's different. That's way different. All right, let's see if he'll come on up here. There he is. Look how fur he slammed that line. He was wrapped all up in it. Okay, if he'll quit, we'll go ahead and net him, folks. And I'll show him to you. It's not that big of a blue, but he sure is pretty and a hard, hard pulling dude right here. Quit. There he is, golly. That's a good one. All right, folks, pretty good one right there. Let's let him go. He deserves to go back. That was a heck of a fight. All right, folks, let's let him go right here. There he goes. Best part of it. Now, as far as how far I fish behind the boat, it, it varies. But it probably on the average anywhere between um, 18 to 20 yards, something like that, behind the boat. In other words, 50, 60 feet behind the boat. Sometimes not that far. It just depends, folks. But with braid, you can get by with that because there's no stretch. You have instant contact with the fish. And of course, your hook set's gonna be a much easier. That braid's gonna cut through the water a lot easier than mono when it comes to, to dragging or trolling. Same thing, basically the same technique. But we're coming through some shad right now, right here. I'm going to show y'all. Y'all see that? In 15 feet of water, that's what I'm looking for. And I'm rock throwing distance away from the creek right now, creek channel. But when I come through marks like that, I expect a, a bite. And a lot of times I'll get that bite. See, right now I'm getting that bite. Wow. There he is, too. They knocked the fire out of it once. I guess they just do a taste test. I don't know. That's what, well, that's what's happening today, folks. Then they'll turn it loose. Then the second time they commit. My goodness, this is. This is made to order for anybody. I don't care who you are. Y'all see that yellow butterfly out here in the middle of nowhere? Where'd he go? He flew right in front of the... Oh, my goodness. They... I can't tell y'all as to how hard this fish is a pulling. Look at him. He's going nuts. If you'll give a channel cat... 
an opportunity and not fish with too heavy a tackle, he'll out pull a blue cat that's equal size to him. A channel cat is a powerful little fish. Is he gonna quit? There he is, good channel cat. Oh my goodness. My, 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 my. I want y'all to look. Okay. Yet another channel cat. Come on. Head first if I can. Well, am I gonna knock him off? Ah, there he is. Wow. That one right there is just this big is the last one we call. No doubt. Don't y'all look what a big old hunky dory right there. Let's take a hook out of him. On it. You know, I've mentioned this before too. You're either, okay, it, it can only be this way here, folks. And I don't care where you're from or how old you are or even what you look like or your stature or whatever. Okay, you're either a gannet or you're furret. I could even say it like this. You're either furret or a gannet. Me? Well, I'm furry. Let's let him go. Come on back. Golly. Well, folks, you know, there's no doubt in my mind, I realize the fact that fishing with light line, ultralight tackle, forward catfish is not for everybody. And I understand that. But what I'm trying to show out here today is location. Location is very important. In fact, it's the utmost importance of whether or not you're going to catch fish or not. Being at the right place at the right time at the right time of the year where there's shad bait fish present is always going to be the top of my priority when looking for any fish that feeds on shad. I want to say God bless each and every one of y'all. Thank y'all for all the great comments. Hey. Woo. The adrenaline, when it starts flowing, it just, it starts at my feet. It starts at my feet, and it just, the, the feeling, it's just, the feeling is,